Okay. So today, our agenda is going to be on examples on longitudinal shear. And then we're going to start a new topic, which is shearing stress in tin wall. So these two topics, um, I mean, for today, the rules are still the same. We're going to apply rule number one, two, three, and four. Okay, nothing changed. And there's only two formulas, okay, where the shear flow is equal to uh, v, uh, VQ over I. And then uh, the other one is the shear stress is VQ over IT. Still the same. Nothing changed, okay? But now I want to go through more examples, okay? More examples for, for you guys to see how can we apply this, okay? So I have attached all these figures. So if you were to go to Avenue to Learn, okay, you will have all these figures. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to use all these figures today, okay? So you you should be, you should be uh, fine in this, okay? So uh, if you can, I will suggest that you uh, you should upload all these figures before coming to my lecture, so you can you can see them uh, clearer when I'm doing the examples. Okay, so the box beam. Uh, yeah, I want you to be familiar with some of these. In the box beam, right? So they call it box because this has a box-like feature. It's constructed from four boards. They are fastened together using nails along the beams every two inches. So the spacing of the nails okay, so the spacing of a fastener okay, the spacing of a fastener is every S is equal to two inches right and each nail can resist a shear of 50 pounds so resistance force of each nail of a fastener uh call this small f this is 50 pounds so determine the greater uh, shear V, right? The V, so we want to find what is this V that can be applied to the beam without causing failure of the nails. So uh, if you were to look at a structure like this, where it usually will fail, it will fail at the joints. Okay, so at the joints, I mean region here, it will fail here, it will fail here, it will fail here, it will fail there first. Like what we spoke about, if if you if you've been attacked by someone that's three times your size, where do you go for? You go for the what? The joints, because the joints is where it's weakest. Okay. Then uh we're gonna draw our transformation first. So this is our y. This will be our x, and this will be our z. Okay. So I'm gonna sketch out this uh structure. A very simple sketch. So one. So it has vertical. Okay, so this is our structure. And then, so it's made of four, right? Make from four boards. So that's what I mean by make from four boards. Okay, so this is our four boards. Then all these are all nailed. One, two, three, four. Okay. So if we were to draw transformation over here, this will be Y, this will be Z, this is rotation in the X. So from here, I'm going to actually for this question, you need to find I, Z, Z, uh, you need to find a centroid. I'm not going to waste time on, on this because you guys are really good at it. So the Y bar, the centroid, okay, the centroid is equal to 3.1 inches. 
And the IZZ, first moment of area about ZZ is equal to 197.7 inches. So we have a shear force that's coming down in the VY direction. Okay, so we why we use IZZ? Because we know that if you look at the Q, right, is equal to VY over IZZ. And the first moment of area is about the what? It's about the Z axis. Okay, so the centroid is over here. So this is our centroid. Okay? So this is our centroid. So where failure is going to occur, failure can occur at the top flange. Right, the top flange will not hold properly, it will put itself out, or the failure will occur at the bottom flange. Okay, so bottom where it will fail, let me be more specific. The failure will always be at the where? At the joints. Right, so these are failure. Region. Okay. Any questions so far? Anyone, please. If you are unclear about it, uh, let me know. Are you all okay? We good? No one have question. Okay. So. So from here, if we are, we if we go sketch the shear flow okay so we're going to sketch the shear flow so how does shear flow will flow is the shear flow will flow from here okay so this is how the shear flow will flow later on you'll learn more of this okay this is so these are your q your shear flow okay so the shear flow will always start from the edge, so this will come in this way also, All right? So from here, what is going on is the, the flange, right? So the flange, I'm going to write down, I'm going to write down here. I'm going to move this formula away later on. So the flange, uh, will carry our, were, were, uh, the shear flow Q okay, will be uh, distributed on the top flange right and then the fastener, so we have fastener. The fastener will transmit the shear flow from the flange to the web. And then the, the 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 structure, the web will then transmit. Uh, will will then distribute the shear flow, right? So now, as I mentioned before, the formula to use is Q is equal to V Y over I Z Z multiplied by Q Z. Okay. So as to remind uh, of you again, Vy is a constant. Rule number one, Vy and Izz, they are all what? constant. The only thing to do now is what is your what? What is the Qz that we're going to look at? Okay, what is this Qz? So the failure by looking at at, at this, right? The failure, okay, the failure. Will 
Alka Ida at the uh, top flange. All what? All bottom flange. Okay, it's either the top or the bottom. So if we were to analyze the failure, so let's look at the failure at the top flange. Okay, so failure at the top flange, right? So we're going to do failure at the top flange. So other information that uh, we already know is the distance from here to here. This distance is 3.1 inches okay so failure at the top flange right so before we do that we are going to calculate uh, we are going to calculate what is our what is our uh, q right so we're going to calculate q first so q will be equal to uh, force resistance or resistance force per nail Right, resistance force per nail, and then we're going to divide by the spacing. Okay, so the force resistance per nail given to us is what is 50, right? It's going to be 50. Spacing is 2 inches. I have to multiply by 2. It's multiplied by 2 is because of left and right. So this, you get 50 pounds per inch, okay? right? So that, that is uh, what we acquire. Based on our analysis, we found that the, 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 the Q, the shear flow, because of the nail and the spacing, and you have left and right. Okay? You have the, the, the left, and you also have the right section. That's where we get our, uh, we have to multiply by 2. So from here, so we also know that Q is equal to, uh, oh sorry. So once we have that, the next we have to calculate our Q Z for the top flange. Okay, so Q Z for the top flange. So the width, so I usually love to do width. Multiply by depth and y bar. So for this case, our width is 12 inches. Our depth is 1. And our y bar is 3.1 minus by uh, 1 divided by 2. Right? So this will be equal to 3.1 minus 0.5 times 12 is equal to uh, 31.2. Inch to power Q3. Then from here, we can directly go for Q is equal to the V. So V is what we would like to acquire. Q is 31.2. The second moment of area is 197.7. And this will be equal to what? 50. Okay. So from here, the shear force. Okay, the shear force due to the top flange failure, 50, 197.7 divided by 31.2 is equal to 316, 316.8 pounds, or you can call it as 307 pounds of force. So this is the top now. Okay, so this is for the top. So I'm going to do side by side. Next, we're going to look at the failure of the bottom flange. Right? So we're going to look at failure of the flange. 
So I'm going to do this here. Now, can someone tell me what is the first 